Greetings and welcome. My name is Jake Rayson. I'm a wildlife food forest garden designer and today what I say is don't fear the comfrey. So this is comfrey. It's in the borage family. Um, this is Bocking 14, so it's a sterile uh, comfrey. It's a cross, can't remember exactly which one, and developed by the what is now the Organic Centre. Uh, beloved by bees, it's there is a there is native there are native species of it as well, and this has been bred so it's got a very high potassium uh, content in the leaves, and you can use it as a as a compost as a feed. So people traditionally will make a feed out of the leaves. They'll chop the leaves up and put it in water, and it stinks, and it's just really really horrible. But what you can do, much less work, is to chop it up and then drop it in place. So I have uh, comfrey growing around each and pretty much each and every fruit tree. This is a Tuna sinensis Chinese cedar, a bit battered by the wind, um, but it's quite high nutrient requirements. So I will, I'll let this grow a bit, a bit more and I'll chop it back in a few weeks and then just lay a mulch around the base of the tree. And then that will, yeah, that does the trick lovely. As per usual, I'm very late putting out my, um, putting out my chilies, but the, 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 the the chance of frost has gone now so I'll put my chilies out what I do is grow them in pots and then I'll put them into the uh, dig them into the ground and I've got some irrigation pipes here as well which will irrigate them and I did have comfrey growing or oh, um, comfrey growing in here so I don't really worry about it I let it grow you can see some of its roots still there so it will kind of big tuberous roots let it will grow back just keep cutting it and using it as a mulch um, I cut it back and I've moved it I'll show you in a second but don't worry about don't worry don't fear the comfrey having it in a, in a raised bed uh, because you can just chop it back and just keep an eye on it and make sure it doesn't swamp other stuff out so what we've got here at the bottom of the garden is an Eliagnus, Eliagnus abingii uh, which is a good evergreen uh, windbreak and it's slow growing. This is about five years old and it's about two and a half meters tall. It won't grow much more than one, three, four, five, four meters, five meters, which is which is fine. And what I have found is that this time of year it gets the old yellow leaves and I think it's a very dry spot right here. I think it's, it's on the edge of the edge of a little bit of a cliff there. And it needs kind of extra watering and extra feeding. So I've been doing that and it's kind of perked up quite a lot. Um, but I'm really surprised that it does need it, but uh, I've um, moved the, I've chopped the comfrey back from the polytunnel and I've put it down here. So you can see this is a chopped up comfrey. Don't even need to chop it up very much, just chop, cut it and then drop it where you want the mulch to go. And then I've actually planted out the comfrey, the one which was in the polytunnel. I've cut it all back and I've dug a hole for it, watered it really, really well and popped it in here. And that will grow back in some shape or form. And then you'll be able to have, I've, done, I've put some down there by the new Eliagnus hedge down here. And then you'll be able to chop and drop and feed the hedge. Or all, all with, the, with the comfrey plant right next to it. So that's just a little of what I've been doing today. Uh, there we go. Hope you like it. If you do, like, subscribe, comment, whatever you want. I don't really, I don't really mind. But more than anything, I hope it's useful. Thanks, bye.